Here are the brand new Galaxy S21 and S21 Plus. Let's take a look at what Samsung just announced. Building on their 2020 recipe behind the Galaxy S20 series, Samsung announced the new lineup for 2021, which is the Galaxy S21, the Galaxy S21 Plus, and the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Now I made a separate video on the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which has features like S Pen support that aren't found on the other phones. In this video, I'm just gonna focus on the S21 and S21 Plus. Now last year's S20 series represented the biggest year over year change we'd seen from Samsung in a while. This year's S21 series gets a bunch of upgrades and refinements, but overall is not a drastic change from the S20 series. Well, until you get to price. Samsung trimmed the starting prices of all S21 series phones by $200. <laughs> yeah, let that sink in. The Galaxy S21 starts at $800, the Galaxy S21 Plus at $1,000, and the Galaxy S21 Ultra at $1,200. Now, Samsung said they were able to cut prices because the phone's components cost less, which I think is part of the story. Now, you could argue that the S20 and S20 Plus were too premium, which was conspicuously symbolized by their really high price tags. Now, after going through the specs and features for the S21 and S21 Plus, it seems to me that Samsung found ways, sometimes significant, to scale back. Well, look, however they got there, the lower prices reflect the reality that we are living in a world that's been in a pandemic for over a year, which has caused millions of people to struggle financially. For a lot of us, just knowing that the new S21 series is more affordable than the S20 family might be enough to upgrade. So let's get into the nitty gritty and start with styling. Look, there are only so many ways to decorate a rectangular slab, hence why foldable and rollable phones seem so exciting to me. But what Samsung has done is they've taken the camera bump and made it a different color than the back, and they blended that color into the sides of the phone, and it gives the phones a striking look. It might not be to everyone's taste, but hey, that's why there are phone cases. The S21 comes in four colors, Phantom Violet, Phantom Gray, Phantom Pink, and Phantom White. The S21 Plus has three options, Phantom Violet, Phantom Silver, and Phantom Black. Now there's no word on what's up with the word Phantom being used in every color or whether Samsung is just a big fan of the P.T. Anderson film Phantom Thread. From the front, the phones look identical to the S20 series, with a centered hole punch housing the same selfie camera as last year. Under the display is a larger ultrasonic fingerprint reader, which uh, bodes well for people like me with large hands. Just like last year, the screens are 6.2 inches and 6.7 inches respectively, but both are covered in Gorilla Glass Victus, which we saw it debut on last year's Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The screen support an adaptive 120 hertz refresh rate that makes everything from scrolling and app animations to gaming look super smooth. The screens also get a new feature called Eye Comfort Shield that adjusts the amount of blue light based on the time of day and the content on screen. The idea is it should help reduce eye fatigue. And until we get the phones, we'll have to wait and see how it works. In terms of battery, the S21 has the same battery from the S20, but the S21 Plus gets a slightly bigger battery. It's 4,800 milliamp hours compared to the 4,500 milliamp hour one on the S20 Plus. Powering the S21 series is the new top of the line Android Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chip. Both the S21 and S21 Plus are waterproof and come with either 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of storage. As far as 5G, both support sub six and millimeter wave bands. But look, like I said in most of my review videos over the past months, if 5G is your main reason for wanting a new phone, do a little research on whether your carrier offers it in your area and what the speeds and coverage are like. Let's get to the cameras, which are exactly the same as the ones found on the S20 and S20 Plus. And that's great because they both had solid camera systems. They were a bit overshadowed by the ridiculous camera specs on the S20 Ultra. The S21 and S21 Plus each have a wide, ultra wide, and telephoto camera. 
There are new video features, including director's view, which lets you preview all of your cameras on screen at once and select the best shot, and vlogger view, which lets you capture video from both the front and rear cameras at the same time. I'm very curious to try both of these features out. Now, the S21 series supports Samsung's new Galaxy Smart Tags accessory, which you can attach to things like your keys or bags to keep track of them, especially if you lose them. Think of it kind of like the popular tile tracker. Both phones support fast wired and wireless charging and have wireless power share for charging accessories. And now we come to the specs and features that have been downsized and changed. I believe Samsung did this to help the phones hit their lower price points. Now, not all of these are bad, but some might sting more than others. There's no longer a wall charger included in the box. Both phones lack a micro SD card slot for expandable storage and the S21 Plus doesn't have a time of flight camera, which was found on the S20 Plus. The S21 and S21 Plus come with eight gigabytes of RAM, which is a sizable step down from the 12 gigabytes of RAM that came on the S20 and S20 Plus. That one stings a bit, but we're gonna have to wait until we get the phones to see what the effect is from having a third less RAM on performance and running Android 11. The S21 Plus gets a Gorilla Glass Victus back, while the S21 sports a plastic rear side. Now, I look, I, I, I know a lot of people were disappointed that the regular Galaxy Note 20 had a plastic back, but I think part of that was because the phone cost $1,000. On paper, the switch from Gorilla Glass to plastic on the S21 does seem like a wise compromise. Then there are the displays, which have full HD resolution instead of the higher quad HD resolution found on the S20 and S20 Plus. Now I have to wait until I get the review units to see exactly how noticeable that resolution difference is. But I'd like to point out, if you keep your S20 or S20 Plus locked in at 120 hertz refresh rate, then your phone is already at the same resolution as these new phones. On the whole, most of these emissions and downgrades are actually pretty wise. And they also help differentiate the phones in the S21 lineup from each other, especially the S21 Plus and the S21 Ultra. Look, it's one thing to compare specs and features, but I, I truly am excited to get my hands on the phones for a full review. Pre-orders for the S21 phones start January 14th at 11 a.m. Eastern, and the phones will be available on January 29th. But I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about the S21 and S21 Plus. Do you think the trade-off on some specs and features is worth the lower price? Now, is there one phone that appeals to you more than the others? Throw your thoughts in the comments. Also, make sure you check out my other video all about the Galaxy S21 Ultra.